good, uh, good afternoon. Me and my group are doing, uh, doing a robot called Rotta. Uh, I am Ana Cuadra, this is Roy Ortiz and me is Jose Rivero. Uh, basically, we decided to make a robot that would have an application as a telepresence robot. Uh, there, there's already several telepresence robots, as you can see in the image there. Uh, we decided to make, we noticed that most of them were tall and they tended, they, some of them had a little bit of speed, but uh, none of them are really useful for, like, say, a military application where you could just uh, deploy a, 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 a robot and you'd be able to quickly go back and forth and you'd be able to tumble around and, you know, have a, a, rugged, uh, a rugged application. So we decided to make, a, uh, basically, we did, our application was a telepresence robot for uh, military use that could, that could assist in combat assessments and medical assessments too, because many could use it. And it'd be uh, good, uh, quickly deployable for, and good also for reconnaissance in close combat situations if, if necessary. So mostly it's a telepresence robot. Uh, so the, the proposed design basically is just a wheel-based uh, platform with a functional attachment. Uh, in this case, it would, it would be a two-way two camera attachment like it has a two-degree freedom move. And uh, it would have an optional end effector, which we chose to forego. A uh, track system, which we ended up going with just a base wheel system, and a remote control. Uh, some of the, compon the components that we decided to use for this, for our robot, was the uh, Lego Mindstorm NXC 2.0. Basically, uh, it brings a brick, or a little command center, and uh, with that, you can you, you, you create your Lego uh, creation, and with the brick, you can make your, your, your creation do a lot of different things. Here's some examples, basically, here's like a tank. Has treads. Here's a, a little rugged Humvee looking like uh, vehicle, and then you have a claw here and another, a crane over there on that corner. Uh, some of the other components we use as a as a as a mobile platform, we used a, a Nitro RC car, uh, two My Touch cell phones, uh, Xbox 360 controller for the remote control. Uh, cell phones are for the touch presence. And Jose will take the. Now, for uh, the BOM, the build of materials for our project is actually, you can see, it's very cost effective because many of the components were uh, found in house. Um, for starting off with the Lego Mindstorms, the kit cost $320, and that one we actually bought. Uh, the two MyTouch uh, 4G phones uh, actually cost $400 a piece, but since we already had them, we didn't have to uh, uh, buy them. Uh, the Nitro RS4 RT4 uh, gas RC car cost about 360 that was also in-house so we had no cost in that the there's also Xbox wireless controller adapter cost about fifty dollars we also had that in-house Bluetooth receiver came with the Lego kit so that was also so the total if, if one would want to do this as a full brand new package the total cost would be about fifteen hundred but since uh, we have many of those things already in-house then it came to three hundred uh, I would like to know that the cell phones is not exactly the greatest telepresence stuff, so we would have gone and put a different prop in the real protest. Okay, so basically the concept is we use the Lego NXT and then we combine it with the uh, MyTouch uh, uh, 4G phone we, and then we have a telepresence robot which uh, through video chat of the uh, MyTouch we can actually drive the car around or we can also have a telepresence uh, communication both audio and video. Next slide. Uh, now for the design. The design, uh, we basically had two parts, two components uh, of the actual uh, mechanism. We have the base platform and then we have uh, the rotating platform. The base platform, we have here, you can see a servo and a close up here on the side, you see there's a gear um, for, for vertical rotation in which it has been geared down. We have a small gear and a large gear and this will allow uh, for the platform to be able to rotate in a slow and controlled manner since the servos of the Lego system are pretty fast and if you need more power it, uh, it, uh, with it comes more speed. Since we wanted it low speed and high power we did a gear reduction basically one to four right here. And the next one we have uh, the rotating platform where it is basically the essence of the robot. Here we have uh, the end effector which basically grabs onto the cell phone. Then we also have another servo that also is uh, reduced twice. So basically one to four and one to four. So we reduce it a lot to have extra amount of torque because of the, the, of the weight and the moment arm that we have because of the, uh, 
the adapter arm. And then like that, we can also have a controlled and slow steady up and down tilt. As you can see here, the gear, uh, the gear reductions, we use four gears, two little, two little gears and one big gears. We also use some shocks to help uh, with motion and to help it stay afloat so that it can maintain any position we set it to. Next one. Okay, and finally here is the, the complete platform where you can see here once the, the rotary, rotating platform is mounted on top of the base platform, it basically rotates and it can go in 360 degrees and the actual end effector that holds the phone can pan up and down about 90 degrees. I'm going to pass over to Alan for controls. Uh, for the project, we decided to go a different route with remote control. Uh, normally, you have to control it using a laptop and figured that would be a clunky and uh, uh, very useful uh, method, especially for if you're in a real situation and you want something compact and light, uh, such as an Xbox 360 controller, you could use PS3 also. Uh, basically, what we use is a wireless 360 controller and we connected it to a, a, an adapter that lets, me, that lets the computer read, uh, read the controller and basically have you control the robot using an uh, Xbox 360 controller. And then this, this brick already is Bluetooth and it requires a Bluetooth dongle in order for you to connect to the computer. So the brick is able to read the commands from the controller through the computer and through Bluetooth as well. So, uh, I'll pass on the, uh, the information about the RC card line. Okay, uh, in order to um, make a platform that's fast enough uh, to, uh, uh, to be able to uh, do the application we're really going for, we went with something with a little more power. A lot of the electric power uh, vehicles weren't giving us uh, sufficient speeds. So I, uh, I basically got us uh, this little gas car. It's uh, 0.15 cc's. It uh, goes about, uh, without any of the load before, around 60 miles an hour. So uh, once um, it uses uh, radio frequencies to uh, control uh, uh, all the steering, and it's uh, its fuel base is uh, a nitro fuel base with 20% alcohol. Um, and uh, next slide, please. Here we're going to show you how uh, we actually used uh, uh, the truck case because on the back, basically the bed is going to be uh, where the the whole uh, robotic arms uh, mechanism would sit on top. This mechanism could actually be uh, our future uh, implication where this were to have, be able to have it to be able to drop off not just be able to stick with the vehicle, but in this case we stuck it to a vehicle. And, uh, and basically between the two remotes uh, I would use the, the radio frequencies to, to control the, the, the combustion and all the steering in the, in the RC car and then um, well, someone else uses the Xbox controller to control the, the surveillance mechanism. Next slide please. Okay, uh, just before we show you uh, some videos on how it works, uh, our application of making a fast um, telecommunication and uh, reconnaissance vehicle was completed. We made a, a complete robotic system that's uh, uh, all inclusive. Uh, we were also able to connect everything wirelessly, which is uh, a huge uh, uh, advantage, especially for this kind of a system where you want to be able to run autonomously. So um, all the all the uh, applications were proven and fulfilled. Uh, we're going to use some. We're going to show you some videos uh, since we can't run the gas car in here. We're going to show you some videos on with both systems working. And no, um, actually, can we get the lights? So the video will be better. Uh, we actually filmed this at night just to prove that we can use uh, the communication in the video uh, to steer the car with just a simple light in the front of the vehicle uh, guiding the way. You have some by, by you, have to press them, you have to press them together, I think. Oh. Yeah. No? No, you have to, one, one. one goes over here and presses the other one. Oh. Yeah. Use the room. Press them a few times. There you go. Okay, put the video, please.
useful for many things. Yeah. Very nice. Here we're just coasting, so you can see uh, the camera is actually on already. You see it rotating by itself. I'm driving the RC car, and uh, Jose is actually driving the uh, the robotic arm mechanism. The streets completely dark, so. Uh, going a lot slower because of the load and it was actually very tricky to handle uh, maneuvering because of the fact that it has so much weight on the top. Um, here we're demonstrating the video capabilities. There's the second uh, camera that was used to control. See, he's rotating it to the front where, the, where there's lights and you're, that's me right there actually on the small screen. I'm waving at the camera. Okay. And then um, I demonstrate after the reconnaissance is done, it leaves, it goes where it has to go. Um, and actually here is where you're going to see our first uh, trouble. Um, right there is going around 40 and it flips. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, since it's Lego based, it's, it was pretty, good, uh, pretty easy to build it back together. The RC car is totally used to rolling over. Um, i tell you that from uh, experience. Um, you can turn the lights back on. Please. You can turn the lights back on. Just uh, see a close up of the power controller. Quick demonstration. Uh, yeah. The robot. And basically. You can already see that the car is not used to the load. It's it's actually looks like it's carrying a like a you know, pickup that's carrying a lot of bricks or something. And I think the battery's going to die. And then you see the arm mechanism that we created to hold the camera itself. And another great thing is since uh, this is controlled via Bluetooth and the car is controlled via radio frequency, there's no interference whatsoever. I'd like to know there's something wrong with the gears right now. This is making it normal. Correctly, go ahead. Yes. Perfect. Yes.